It is so nice to meet all of you this afternoon. You know, I really appreciate it. The title of this program is called Shapes and Shadows. You know, I've been photographing for many years, and one of the things that happens after you've been photographing a long time is you could get bored with what you're doing. Yes, believe it or not, as a professional, you could get kind of bored with what you're doing. So I'm always looking for different ways to see my subject. And one of the things that I'm doing these days is I try to look at things in a less than literal fashion. And uh, so that's what draws me to shapes and then also shadows. And so we're going to talk a little bit today about how you can create some of these interesting things yourself and why you should want to. Okay, I think this thing is not working. The little clicker thing. Can we make it go? Oh, here we go. All right. Okay, but it's not going forward. <laughs> We have a little problem here. Houston. OK. Let me just tell you real quickly about the tools I use. I'm going to tell you, I keep things super simple. Um, I'm not a photographer who feels like they have to have all of the latest and greatest things. You won't find a ton of stuff like that in my studio. You're going to find really good, solid camera equipment, because I believe that's going to be the number one thing that's going to help me to create pretty images. So I like good glass. And one of, that's one of the reasons that I love the Nikon system is I really like the good glass. You'll notice that all of the lenses that I use are fast. It's pretty much fast glass, and I really like that a lot. Um, I do use speed lights, and I also use studio strobes when I need them. But most often than anything is for me to be able to use just a window. I love using window light. And the first thing we're going to talk about is talking about working with shadows. And so a window is my very favorite tool. The window is going to provide me with the kind of light that I want, a nice big light source. This is in my studio. And you'll notice that it's not fancy. You, do you love my homemade reflector? Let me tell you, you too can have one just like this. Uh, it's from Home Depot, and it's just nothing more than a piece of insulation board. I do have a really pretty reflector that goes on a stand, but I find that this one is just my second go-to thing. I love using it for, for a variety of reasons. I can take it literally anywhere. It's cut the same size as the windows are, so that if I do want to block out the light, I just take that light panel and just stick it up in the window, and then I can create an environment where if I want to use studio strobes that I can do so and block out the light. Um, I love just working with a wall, a wall and a window. Those are my two very favorite, favorite tools to work with. But these days, I'm finding something else I really like working with. And this is working with opaque plexiglass. Um, you can buy it at Tap Plastics. I bought an eight foot section of plexiglass. And it's the quarter inch kind. And it has about a 40% opacity. And, and here's the trick for me on how to do it. I walked into Tap Plastics, and I, walked, and I put my hand behind the plastic. Could I see my shape? So really pretty simple. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that out. And Because I started seeing, I, I wanted to create some images that I could sell to clients, in my case, as a, as a working pro, that were not super literal like in the way of maybe doing a nude. And you know that wasn't so in your face that they could actually feel that they could hang on their wall as a piece of artwork. And so literally, all you need is some clamps. As you can see, those are my two light stands um, and some clamps to hold it up. Now, you could get real fancy if you wanted to. And you could frame it. And that way, it's something nice for your studio. But this is just the way that I do things. And, and it's just, I try to keep things simple. And for those of you that are maybe working out of your home, that's what you want is some things that are really super simple and that you can put away or put in your garage. One thing I think that really does work well is, let's go back to our picture of my studio. Do you see how high the window is? I like the light to fall off in a downward fashion. That's going to be really important to me. So I'm going to actually place that piece of plexiglass parallel to the window and just use the window light that comes through. Once I've done that, I place my subject on a piece of plex, or, or excuse me, a piece of um, a, 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 a small platform of some sort, like maybe a couple of phone books or something, so that I can get their feet up, so that they're not at the seam of the plexiglass. You get it? Are you with me? And so once I've done that, then I can start creating the images that I want for my subject. I'm going to take a light meter reading of the, the white space. I use just the light meter 
in my Nikon, and I find that it's actually very accurate. I really don't have a problem getting a good exposure. Um, and then here's one of the things that's really critical. I like the subject, in this case, I want them to be very close to the plexiglass. The closer they are, the more that their shape is gonna be more distinct and more outlined. But this is such a fun tool for you to use. First of all, if you're doing like a fine art nude, if somebody's behind something, they feel much more comfortable and they feel, it makes them feel much more, you know, not so uncomfortable. Oh, here I am in my, my glory and such. And so here's one of the images that I captured, and I'm sorry that you can't see them on this screen very well because they're because of the lights up here. But one of the things that I hope that you'll notice is notice how the arms are placed away from the body. When you're doing this kind of a silhouetted uh, image, it's important to keep the arms away from the body. And then this is really important as well with the feet. I like the feet to go like this or like this. Do you, does that make sense? Now here's why. Because we look thinner and more, more graceful if our legs are either crossed like this or if we're bending that front knee and then dropping it over the other leg. So as you can see with her, she's actually got her legs crossed and then I'm having her lean a bit um, forward with her shoulders just a tiny bit. This is actually an advertisement that I did for um, a, a handbag company from Italy, Mar uh, Martin Marino out of Italy. And I wanted to create a variety of images for them that they could do for ads. But I thought, when we were almost done with the photo shoot, I said, you know what? I want to do a few images for you that are less than predictable. They're not like just, hey, here's my purse, OK? But something that was like, hmm, that made me kind of want to, to go a little farther with it. And so we did a couple of images of them with this young lady. Um, one of the things I think that really is important is you do need to learn the art of good posing when you're working in the silhouetted fashion. So with the hands, it's important to make those hands just drop down, and if there's a joint, you joint, you bend it. Um, this is one of the fine art nudes I did uh, just very recently, and you'll notice that I've added a bit of texture screen over in addition to putting her in front of the plexiglass. So one more element that I incorporated so that I could take it from being a literal, hi mom, okay, here's a, you know, just a picture of a body, to being something that someone could hang on their wall as a piece of fine art. In fact, this young lady has this, uh, this as a 60 inch print hanging in her home. So it's very, very simple for you to be able to create these kinds of things. It's all about creating a, an emotional response in a very abstract way. So for instance, in her case, you'll notice that her arms are brought back. Do you see what happens when my, my shoulders go back like that? It brings the shoulders up and it gives a more graceful appearance to your subject. Um, I'm gonna have a slight tilt to the head. And in her case, I had one foot slightly in front of the other and I said, I want you to rock forward on that foot so that it would kind of give a little bit of a movement. Those tiny little abstract things that you can do are some things that can really make a huge difference. Here's another example, but just in this case, you'll notice that I flipped her on the right-hand side. This is actually the image that she ended up purchasing, because I, and I love the way that her head is kind of tilted towards the back. Also, one other thing. Do you notice how it gets a little darker on the bottom? That's that fall off that I was talking about earlier, because the wind is a little bit higher and the light is coming down, I find that really eye appealing. I, I don't want to draw anything away from like her, her shape, the shape of her body. And here's just one more I did for Martin Marino. And in this one, you'll notice that she's kind of almost leaning forward with that handbag. And see, the logo for that handbag company was important. So I really encourage you, um, in, in, when you're working with shapes like this, start thinking in an abstract way and think, well, what can I do to draw attention to what I want someone to see. And you'll notice by bringing your hand up like this, notice the way the fingers are pointed, those little nuances really make a bit of difference, just like that. And because I'm using a window and just a sheet of plexiglass, it's very quick. So even if you're working out of your garage, by the way, you could do this with garage light as well, or in your home using a door, a, a doorway to bring in the light, just remember you want the light to come in um, from a higher camera angle if possible. And then just one more. This is one of the nudes I did. Notice how you can see her little bottom pressed against the, the plexiglass there. 
you can really start seeing the differences in the way that those movements with the hands, bending those joints, really does uh, enhance the subject and create a very elegant, elegant appeal. I tend to overexpose slightly my imagery when I'm doing these kind of photographs because I know I want it to be very soft and ethereal. I want that very elegant, I want a whisper to be taking place. I don't want it to be too dark and crisp. That's really important to me. And you know, it just goes to show, I, um, one of the things I wanted to mention, where did I get this idea to do this? Well, I was at the Cosmopolitan Hotel in Las Vegas and they have these amazing columns in the center of the lobby and as I was watching, they had these beautiful figures that were inside behind opaque glass. And that literal, that vision literally haunted me until I found a way to, to incorporate and do it in my studio. So the moral of the story is, is open your mind and expose yourself to a variety of things. And it doesn't have to be literal photography. In other words, from everyday elements, you can see there's so many things that you can do as a person to be able to inspire yourself. And maybe it means bringing some of your friends together to do it as well. What about paper and plastic? Well, one of the other things that I do is I like to create garments out of unpredictable things. You see, unpredictable things like, how about just regular paper? In this case, this dress is made entirely of paper. All I did was just take it and, and around her back fold it, tape it, and then I, put a, I had a garment, an undergarment for her to wear so I wasn't taping it on her skin. And then I created a skirt for her and then I tore paper and then I just taped it onto the, uh, onto the, the dress that I'd created. Okay, why do this? Why do this? It's part of the creative process for me. And it's also part of the experience for my subject. I think it's just a lot of fun. And it's also, you know, so many times I hear people complain and they'll go, you know, I don't have a, a big disposable income. You know, I, I just, you know, I, I'm a working mom or a working dad and, a, and I only have the weekends and I don't have a lot of money to spend. Spend it on the really important things like, you know, a good camera or, you know, on things like that. But you don't necessarily have to spend it on great wardrobe and, and all of these other things. Start looking at other um, at, at all kinds of things like paper and plastic and stuff like that as ways to create garments for your subjects to wear. This took me about 20 minutes to create um, and it really is so much fun and then when you're done with it, guess what? You just cut it up the back and you just, you just tape it. Here's one that I created out of um, newspaper. This one, and again, all I did is that's duct tape around her waist and then I just took the newspaper and I shook it and then I taped it and shook it and taped it. I started from the bottom and worked my way up and that way I could create something that was really unique. I just bought a pair of $5 stockings and then I would cut them in the right, uh, cut, them, um, cut holes in them and then I was able to create some images of this young lady. So you can do that too. Do you know how much this cost me to do this photo shoot? This cost me $5.25. The newspaper was old, so I didn't have to pay for it, and I already had the gaffer's tape, so it was really super simple. And it's just such a silly, creative, fun thing to do. What about plastic? And now let's take that plastic and let's incorporate it into our big piece of plexiglass. Um, I, I just bought some, you know that wrapping paper that you can buy that's kind of clear, but it has, a, it has a tone to it? I just took it and, and I took it around the girl and I taped it around her waistline, and then I, um, I pulled some out across the top and created this gown for her to wear and then put her behind my sheet of plexiglass and created a few images of her wearing this. And I really like it with color. It's really a lot of fun. And you know what? If you can't see it, it doesn't exist. So what that means to you is that it doesn't have to be perfect. You, I mean, it can be a hot, stinking mess. And it's going to look great in camera. You don't have to see everything. Just remember that. Just cut yourself some slack when it comes to putting those things together. And this is exactly what the plexiglass looks like. It's just really just crazy and plastic and bright and bold. And then I started thinking, well, some other ways that I could incorporate some of these concepts in what I do. Because, you know, not everybody wants to just do nudes of people. But I thought, well, you know, I also photograph families and children and also weddings. And I thought, well, what could I do to make this something that would be more editorial for my families? And so I had this little adorable boy in the studio. 
And after I did some series of photographs of him by himself, I had that young lady, I put her in that dress, and I said, hey, you guys, I want you behind my piece of plexiglass, and let's create a series of editorial images of you, you know, and create a story. I thought that would be a lot of fun. So now we're into shapes and shadows. Notice, in this case, I had the boy's older brother. I thought, hey, let's get the two boys there now and start creating a series of images. Again, these are the kind of images that you could hang in your home that don't look like, hey, mom, this is my child at 12 years old. This is, this, the parents know who those kids are and they know about their personality, but it's not something that's like, oh, we have to have it be exactly, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Again, just remember to keep them nice and close and you'll be able to capture some really fun images. One of the most fun things I'm doing right now is working with artificial flowers. Um, I um, am working with, I had this, um, I found on Craigslist, this lady who made these beautiful paper flowers. And I just took them and hung them on the wall in my studio. You wanna talk about an amazing backdrop. They're just fantastic. So here's what I did. I just took this young lady and I put her on a, on a, a step ladder and then had her up on about the fourth step and she kind of looks like she's floating just a little bit. So it's all about creating um, and going what if to yourself. Well, what if I do this? And you know what, guess what? It's just a wall and a window. That's it, so you could do this too. So just think about the placement of your subject, where you're gonna put them, and about the way that you pose the subject. Notice how she's got her hand down. That's kind of anchoring her a bit, and then bending that knee is really important. That gives her body a bit of shape by bending that knee a little bit. And now my favorite thing that I love doing these days is working with wire. Working with window screen. Now, you might think to yourself, well, BNB, why are you doing, well, working with what? Yes, working with window screen. Um, you go to the hardware store and you say, I want about four feet, and, and actually I will tell you, I personally like working with about six to eight feet of window screen. And you want the lightest weight window screen that you can. You want the lightest weight, why? Because you're gonna wanna bend it to create these wonderful shapes. Well, now that I've shown you that, let me kind of show you a little idea of what we might do. Let's bring our little model up here. Um, our beautiful model here is wearing just a silly dress that's done, there's nothing more to this than window screen here, and then just some tool fabric, some cheap tool fabric from the fabric store. Turn straight towards the audience. And as you can see, this by the way, when it is filmed, looks amazing. It looks like, um, like blue. It, it's just this beautiful, soft, subtle blue thing. And basically, if you look really close, you're gonna see it's a hot mess. It's such a hot mess. There's wire basically holding it together, and I'm gonna show you all the, okay. You're gonna, this, this is our secret, okay. Can I turn you around the back? Yeah, okay, yeah, it's, it's really pretty bad. But you know what? Hey, if you can't see it, it doesn't exist, right? So turn around this way, Missy. Um, she's wearing a little undergarment, and that little undergarment just makes it a little bit more modest for the model or for the subject that you're gonna photograph. And I will tell you that I find that if when I'm working with, with uh, the model by putting them in just like a little stretchy dress ahead of time, oh, you can get those little slips, like um, you can buy a slip from like TJ Maxx or someplace like that that has the built-in bra. Those are awesome, they're like 12 bucks, and then you can pin the guts out of them, you can pin them all over and create really, really nice things. And you know what, because you don't have a large investment in them, it's something that you can really do and have a lot of fun with. So this little piece right here takes about, um, uh, usually takes about 25 or 30 minutes for me to create. Um, sometimes, and this, this, is, this is with only four feet of, of um, wire, of the window screen rather. And I prefer, if I have a choice, I like working with the one that's a bit longer. It gives me a lot more creativity. I think I get a much prettier look from the longer versions. But by just building, there's just like little pins holding it here, and there's little pins holding it here, and little pins down here holding it, and then lots and lots of wire. Um, be prepared, you might cut yourself a little bit, but um, hey, isn't that kind of the price of, of, um, of doing things in a fun kind of way? So real quickly, we're gonna just um, do a pop up a couple of images, just so that I can show you a little bit about how I work with the subject. So let me grab a camera, and I think I'm done with this. All right, gorgeous, come here, baby. Just come right about here for me. Excellent. I'm gonna have you turn your feet a little bit this way. 
Beautiful. Now you're going to notice when I'm posing my subjects, I want you to pay attention to the language that I use when I work with them, okay? Um, you notice that when I said I want you to turn your feet towards me, where did I go? I stood exactly where I wanted her to turn to. Why? Because there's no doubt what I want. And for those of you that, that are, are um, budding photographers and do this for, at home, this is like one of the biggest gems you will ever have. So if you want your subject to turn a certain way, make sure you say, hey, turn your feet towards me this way. And guess what? They can't help but get it right every single time. The next thing that I want to do that's going to be important is I like to turn their body away from the, the main light. We're going to pretend this is the main light. In this room, it's impossible because to show you that because we have all of these big lights up here. So I can't show you exactly what that looks like. However, <coughs> excuse me. So we're going to turn her body slightly to, uh, away from the main light. And now the next thing that I want her to do is going to be really important. You see this knee right here? I want you to bend this knee over here. Now, did you notice, by the way, that when I asked her to bend her knee, I said, this knee? I said, I want you to bend this knee. I never use the words left or right, ever. You know why? Because I'm a wedding photographer, and I've had so many occasions at weddings when people would go, you know, and during the ceremony, they go, you know, it's time for the ring exchange, and what does she do? She hands the groom the wrong hand, right? So it's been my experience that if you just say, hey, bend this one, or tilt your head this way, mirror me, it makes it much easier for people to do what you want them to do. And now the next thing is really critical. You see this toe right here? I want you to point it towards me, right here where my foot is. Good job, beautiful. And go like this, doot. Beautiful, point your toe towards me. More, beautiful. That is really important because what happens, this is what happens when you point the toe, like let's say I bend that knee. See how you can see, and on Point the toe forward though, guess what? You only see the top part of the leg, so it's much more flattering to your subject. <coughs> Excuse me. In addition to that, let me explain one other thing to you that really does make a big difference. So stand flat on your feet, okay? And you're going to turn your feet towards me straight this way. Excellent. See, when you stand flat-footed, you have, you have the pressure on your back side equally distributed, distributed on, your backs, on your buns, right? But notice what happens, I'm gonna do this on myself, so I apologize you gotta see this big thing back here, but hey, you'll get the point. Sometimes you gotta suffer, right? But notice what happens when I shift my hip one way or the other. Okay, so here we got flat dukes right here, right? Now notice by going this way, see how we get more pressure on that side of the cheek? Which is what gives your bottom its shape. So when you're doing those silhouettes, little things like that are absolutely critical that you understand that you got to get the weight off one leg. So you got to bend one knee. It's really important. And do what they do in Hawaii, the hula dancers. You go like this and you just push your hip one way or the other. Are you with me? Does that make sense to you? So, okay, we're going to pop off just a couple of frames. Let's see what we got here, kiddo. All righty, right about here. Wow, I'm here to tell you this is a gorgeous little girl. But I'm getting nothing from you here. So that's, that's my fault. And you see, now she's a professional model, but I don't want her to model for me. I need, I need to bring it from her. So here's what I'm going to do. First thing I want you to do, we're going to turn those feet this way just a little bit. Excellent. Very nice. And now I want you to do this for me. Bring this foot forward to me a little bit. This foot just like this. See how my foot is? Beautiful. And now turn your shoulders a little bit this way. Beautiful. About half of that right there. And now with your chest, lean towards me slightly. Gorgeous. More. Oh, look at her. Oh, yeah. Can you raise this shoulder up just a tiny? Oh, love it. Do you see what happened when I had her lean forward slightly? Do you see what happens now? Notice what happens if, if, when I do this. What is my body language saying to you? Back off, right? Notice what happens if I do one thing. Now, what, am I, what is my body saying to you now? Hi, we're friends. I'm listening intently. So you see, those kind of subtle nuances make a huge difference. So, all right, we're going to pop off one frame, and then they're going to kick me off this stage because I know it's about time for me to turn into a pumpkin here. All right, here we go. Love it. Look at you. Gorgeous. Love it. Part your lips for me, and now lean towards me a whole bunch. Ooh, darling. Tilt your head this way just a tiny bit. Love it. Awesome. Gorgeous. Very pretty. Bring your arms like this in front. Gorgeous. Oh, yeah, there she is. Love it. Love it. Can I get you to bust out laughing for no apparent reason at all? That's it. Perfect. Gorgeous. Very, very nice. Could we have a great hand for our little model right here? I'll be doing a program tomorrow at 11 in the big room, and I'll be talking about from brides to babies. 
So if you're interested in either of those two topics, or heck, just come anyway, I'd love to see you there. And I'd love to say a huge thank you to Nikon. By the way, I do answer all my own emails. If you're interested in keeping up and uh, checking in on me, it's Bambi, B-A-M-B-I, at Cantrell, C-A-N-T-R-E-L-L, -L, portrait, P-O-R-T-R-A-I-T, dot com. Bye, kids. We'll see you again.